Welcome everyone to Marketing Rookie to Marketing Rockstar, a roadmap for children's authors. I am Angie Talley, the Children's Department Manager for the Country Bookshop in Southern Pines, North Carolina, and your host for this evening's event. The Country Bookshop is in downtown Southern Pines, North Carolina, and is a 68-year-old independent bookshop with books for kids and adults. We're open every day of the week and love hosting author events like today's event. If you would like to purchase extra copies of either of the featured author's books, you can visit the Country Bookshop's website at www.countrybookshop.biz or follow the links in the chat during the presentation, or even better yet, come to our lovely walkable downtown and see some of our amazing schools and some of our amazing stores when your books come out. Um, a big thank you to the bookshop team. Kimberly is our web guru and Mary is the real ticket master for making this possible this evening. And now I'd like to introduce our presenters for today, Lisa McMahon and Megan Reyes. Lisa is a New York Times bestselling author of the wildly popular Unwanted and Unwanted's Quest series. They have a permanent shelf. They never move, books move around them at my store. Um, and the lovely sweet standalone Clarice the Brave and the Visions and Wake trilogies for teens and her newest series, The Forgotten Five, which you'll soon be receiving in your mailboxes. Lisa splits her time between California, Arizona, and British Columbia, and is truly one of the most delightful authors I've ever worked with. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Megan Reyes knows that some authors write one book and get an agent with the first query. However, that wasn't her first experience, and she's here tonight to help share some of her knowledge that she's learned along the way. A former elementary school teacher, Megan is now a full-time mom and author with debut novel, Dragon Boy, the first in the Heroes of Haven Song series coming out in January from Penguin Random House. Megan knows the way into my heart and the welcome character on her website is an adorable little fox. <laughs> my fox here too tonight. And I bet they have stories to tell. Welcome, Megan. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. It is my greatest pleasure to turn the screen over to these two amazing authors. Lisa, Megan, it's all yours. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And uh, I'm Lisa McMahon. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you for coming to this session. And um, it's really um, exciting to me to be able to share some of the stuff I've learned over the past 14 years. Um, there we go. Hopefully you're seeing a new page on your screen. Okay. My husband's sitting over at the counter. He gave me the thumbs up. So uh, I am Lisa McMahon, New York Times and USA Today bestselling author of 28 books and counting uh, in 20 languages. And I have done a lot of, ex of school visits in my life. And um, I've also been a bookseller. And uh, I was a realtor for seven years. So I have some um, marketing experience with that. And my publishers probably all know me as the author who will try anything. Uh, and that's a good thing. Um, but sometimes they come to me with these new ideas and stuff and they're like, well, let's get Lisa to try it and see if it works. And I'm always open to that. So uh, I feel really good that they feel like they can trust me. But that also means that I've done a lot of uh, different things as far as trying to get my books out there into the public eye. Um, so I'm not always right, and uh, I can't guarantee any results for you here today, but I do believe that my techniques will help you reach more people, more gatekeepers, more uh, teens if you're a YA author. And uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Megan, and she can introduce herself a little bit to you as well. Hi, everyone. Okay, so this the title of this webinar is Marketing Rookie to Marketing Rockstar, and I am the marketing rookie for sure. <laughs> so I am Megan Reyes, the debut author of the Heroes of Haven Song middle grade fantasy series. Book one, Dragon Boy, comes out January 24th with Labyrinth Road, and I'm here to ask all of the questions <laughs> in honor of all the other marketing rookies out there. So just a tiny little intro of how this webinar came to be. Um, I met Lisa at a book signing about a year ago, and I'll share a little bit more about that later. 
but basically from that point on, um, as a debut author, I just kept messaging Lisa questions, <laughs> lots and lots of questions. And I'm also a part of several groups online of other debut authors. And so I just thought, you know, I, the, the content and what I'm learning from Lisa is going to help so many other authors. So that's kind of where this started. So just take it away, Lisa, we are excited to learn. <laughs> Awesome. So you got your book deal and whether you're a debut author or you have several books under your belt or you're not even an author yet, you don't have a book sold. Um, there are three inner thoughts you have that after you, after you get your book deal, oh no, this marketing thing is on me. Number two, oh no, I have no idea what to do. And number three, oh no, I'm starting to get an idea of what I have to do and I'm completely overwhelmed. And these are feelings we can all probably relate to. But let me break it down for you. Um, this is how I look at uh, the time that we're spending um, between the moment we have a book deal and the time our book comes out. So I break it down into four seasons. Um, as you can see, season one is the moment you get your book deal until cover reveal or when you get your ISBN number, basically. Um, that's your prep time. And then season two, uh, from book cover to four months before release day. And then season three, four months before your book comes out uh, to release day. And then season four, release day until the end of time, because you will always <laughs> be selling your books. Uh, so that's a little bit how I look at the whole picture. And I hope that breaks things down. What do you think, Megan? Yeah. So let's go ahead. Can we start with season one from book deal to book cover? I know this is the time before we meet our marketing teams and it just feels like such a long season of waiting for authors. Um, and I know myself and other debut authors are out there wondering like, what can we be doing during this time of this first season? I would love to hear maybe especially about social media and how we can find our audience and connect with them during this, this season one. Absolutely. And this is something that is continuing to change. Social media, finding your audience. Now, if you write picture books or middle grade, your audience is not the child. It's not the reader. Your audience on social media is uh, librarians, teachers, um, educators, just uh, and parents. Those, that's your audience, and those are the people you're trying to reach. So how do you find them? If you're a YA author, your audience might be teens, and so you're, you'll be a little more on TikTok and uh, Instagram. But um, I know that a lot of librarians are on Twitter, and I spend most of my social media time on Twitter, and then second to that would be my Instagram page. But... Um, it's so important to connect and you want to follow a lot of librarians and teachers and authors, other authors. And I just want you to know out there, if you follow me, I will follow you back. In fact, I might already be following you. And sometimes I'm out there looking to see who are the new authors coming up. I want to know about their books. So I might have followed you first. Um, but what we're looking for uh, is to find some local educators first. That's one of the things you can do right away when you've got a book deal is look up your local elementary schools, your local middle schools or high schools. You can go to the library page. You can find out who the librarian is and often they'll have a link to their social media right on that page on the school website. Um, that's a great way to start, to start connecting with your local librarians. Then when it's time for your book to come out, you've already made a connection and you should try and interact with them as well. Uh, engage, like their posts, um, but you don't want to be selling anything at this point. In fact, the whole time until you have a link to sell something, you don't really want to sell anything. You just, you want to announce, you want your uh, bio to show that you are a debut author of whatever year and, um, you know, who your publisher is, that kind of thing. And you'll want to post a little bit. Maybe you'll post your announcement or post that, oh, I've got a big secret. I've got a book coming out. I can't talk about it at all. But make sure you have a few posts like that, a few tweets like that. 
um, that are sitting in uh, on your page. Um, then how do you find other librarians and teachers? And you want to find librarians and teachers all over the country. You want the whole country talking about your books. And there are some secrets to finding those teachers and librarians. And they are, one of the secrets is basically um, search hashtags. And my husband, Matt, is going to be putting some uh, hashtags in the chat so you can kind of see those and see which ones I look for. Um, but I look for hashtags like MG Book Chat on Twitter, li hashtag librarians, teachers, educators, teacher Twitter, teachers of Instagram, if you're on Instagram, fourth grade teacher, fifth grade teacher, etc. cetera. Um, check Book Talk, Kidlit, Middle Grade, Picture Books. All of those hashtags are, if you just click on them, uh, you can just go through and see who's using those. And you can check bios and see if you're talk if you're looking at a teacher or a librarian and you can follow them and if they may very well follow you back especially if your bio says date or if it says uh you're an author then um you know they're they love knowing authors so they there's a good chance they'll follow you back um follow authors who seem to engage a lot with teachers and librarians. And, uh, you know, one person that I follow, Jarrett Lerner, is uh, always engaging with teachers and librarians. Um, so what you can do is, or me, uh, you can go to our, our Twitter pages, our Instagram pages, and just look to see who we follow. And it's really easy to do that. Just click on who uh, we're following, and you can see a whole list of all these teachers and librarians. Probably the last one to 2,000 people I follow have been mostly librarians, teachers, parents who are really engaged, other kinds of educators, and um, there's probably also some Nancy Drew fans <laughs> in there as well, so you might not want to follow them, but feel free to steal those people from me. That It's not like we're in a competition, you know? I was talking to Angie and Megan, you remember this, Megan? We were talking about uh, how it's not a competition. People who uh, read books, read a lot of books. So we can all help each other out. Yeah, I actually took this advice. Um, you had told me, I think it was about a month ago. And so I, I did just what you said. And I went on your Twitter and see to see who you were following. And I spent, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes and found hundreds um, just within the first half hour. And I, I, I followed them. And like you said, a lot of them follow right back. And I've already started building those relationships. And so it's been fantastic. Um, That's great. I'm really glad and, to know that worked for you. And speaking, if I, if I can, speaking of building relationships and making connections, which kind of sounds like season one is all about getting that started. Um, I wanted to tell a little story about how Lisa and I met. Um, this is kind of for all my introverts out there <laughs> because I, she, so she was doing a book signing in Sacramento and I am a huge fan of the unwanted like you guys like big old nerd for the series. And so I said, I have to go, I have to meet her. But when I showed up, I don't know if you knew this Lisa, but I, I saw you at the table where she was signing books. I didn't walk up right away. I like hovered, like I had to gain my, my courage um, just to walk up and say hi, because I'm, I'm shy when I meet new people. But what I will say is kind of the moral of the story. I'm so glad that I met her and I talked with her and her, her husband, Matt, for a while and really introducing yourself to people, whether it's bookstore people or librarians or other authors, it might not come naturally at first, but I just implore you to be brave and try to overcome that awkwardness because the relationships you end up building are so worth it. Um, and that's just one example of when I when I met Lisa. Um, so. Do, uh, I think maybe we can move on to season two. Oh, I wanted to talk ready. a little bit more about bookstores and then uh, oh. building the presence, but uh, I wanted to add on to your story. Like the, the, re the fact that you came to that event was everything. 
I, that was the start of our relationship. And we began to get to know each other more after that. But you came to my event, you brought your kids, you bought my books. I noticed you. You told mm -hmm. me about your books. You told me you're a debut author for next year. And then you told your editor, Lisa Abrams, who I also know because she edited all my Unwanted's books, you told her that you met me. And yeah. you said, do you think we could ask Lisa to blurb my book? And <laughs> you were so smart because you didn't ask me to do that at the book signing. Never do mm -hmm. that. <laughs> you, so you went to Lisa. Lisa asked me if I'd be willing to read it. And I said, of course. She made all this effort to come to my event. I would love to read that book. And I ended up loving the book and I blurbed it. So, and now we're doing this thing together. And yeah. I mean, you know, that's all happened because of what you did. So mm -hmm. do that. Follow, do what Megan does. <laughs> Be brave guys. Be brave. Moving on to bookstores. Um, so important to follow as many independent bookstores as you can. They mm -hmm. will get to know you as well through your tweets. They may follow you back if it says you're an author in their, in your bio. Um, and uh, get to know your local booksellers. You want to know your local independent booksellers, your local Barnes and Noble booksellers or whatever kinds of stores you have near you. Um, and if you are out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a bookstore, start thinking about an area where you might go and spend some time, um, whether it's with school visits and doing book signings or um, just to take a road trip for a day to go and visit a bunch of bookstores once um, you know, things are getting closer to your book being out, but getting to know booksellers is so important. We want to, you want to meet the children's buyer of the bookstore. You want to go to their events if they have any, um, going to an event like Megan did was so smart. Um, and I've also had a few authors ask if they could come along with me on to do one of my school book events. And that's totally legit, totally fine to ask. Uh, and that helps you understand, like, what do you do during a school uh, visit? Um, let me think. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so that's basically bookstore stuff. You can also follow hashtag Indie500Books, which is um, a hashtag that a, a bunch of renegades of middle grade authors and I are doing. Um, we're introducing... 500 indie bookstores this summer and uh, all on Twitter and Instagram. So that's a great hashtag to follow if you want to get to know some bookstores around the country. Uh, and then build your presence. You want to be building a website and your social media. And some of you might sit, be sitting there going, is this all going to be about social media? I promise it's not. But it does help if you have at least one social media that you can uh, network on. Again, some people just don't want to do social media and that's fine. We have other things you can do. Um, but you want to start thinking about your school and bookstore presentations. Those are two different things. Usually my school presentation is very different from my bookstore presentation. My school presentation has a lot of slides. It's got video, um, book trailers and fun facts about authors. My bookstore presentation, I generally just talk for a little bit, introduce myself, tell an interesting story about my past, maybe how I became a writer, um, do, do a little reading, uh, then do a signing and uh, take some photos. And also we'll talk a little bit about this later. Never mind. We're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting so excited about this. Um, so does this mean we're diving into season two um, from book cover to four months before pub day? And I just want to say this is the season I'm in right now, Lisa. So I'm like super stoked <laughs> to learn more. Awesome. Um, and this is kind of where we dive in, I think, to cover reveals and pre-orders and all of that, right? So that's where we're headed. That is where we're headed. So all this time you're continuing to follow librarians, teachers. I still do that today. I'm, I was just doing it yesterday. Um, and I forgot to mention, there's one very cool way to, to find more librarians and teachers. And that is to go to lists, your lists on Twitter 
Um, if you are on your phone app of Twitter, there is, if you go to your profile, there's a thing that drops down and there's a thing you can click called lists. And once you're starting to follow a lot of teachers and librarians, they'll suggest different lists to you. And you don't wanna just follow the list, you wanna actually click on who's a member of that list. And then you can find a ton of, uh, whether it's librarians, school librarians, middle grade authors, YA authors, picture book authors, um, picture book lovers, whatever. Uh, that's a great way to do it too. So lists are very important. Um, season two, cover reveal. This is a big deal. It feels so big. Um, but I do want you to know that sometimes it, it doesn't get the attention that you hope it does. And I want you to feel okay about that. Cover reveal is something that everybody's doing now. Five years ago, I don't feel like we did it quite as much. But uh, now everybody's doing a big cover reveal. And that's awesome. That's for your people who already know who you are. And hopefully some people will find you in the process of your cover reveal, but um, don't feel bad if that's not as big of an event as you were hoping it was going to be. Um, that's also the time when you let people know that your book is available for pre-order. So um, then there are some different pages where you can uh, join, like the Amazon Author Central page, Goodreads, um, and then ARCs kind of show up in there as well. Now, ARCs, I want to make sure that you realize that ARCs are not for your family. <laughs> They're not for your mom. They're not for, you know, the neighbor kids and stuff. ARCs are really, really valuable. You can use those for so many amazing things. Like um, if you're contacting groups like Book Posse, uh, if you go to the hashtag book posse, book sojourn, book allies, all of those com those little uh, groups on Twitter are a wonderful groups of librarians. And they love to talk about new books that are coming out. And if you send them some ARCs, they'll pass it around, all of them. They are all around the country. Book, uh, book posse is one of my favorites. Um, they pass those arcs around. They all tweet about them. And they all retweet each other. There's like 12 or 15 people in the group. So you're getting a lot of traction from that one arc. And if you have several arcs to give out, you can do that too. Um, there's also, most people don't get arcs, I don't think. I feel like they're starting to not do that as much. So if you just have a... Um, just a uh, internet version of your book that's being passed around as an arc. Maybe there are ways to um, connect and get those out to them as well. Um, but Megan, how did your whole cover reveal and pre-order thing begin? I, um, gosh, it was only last month. It feels like a long time ago, <clears throat> but I actually partnered with a blog to do the cover reveal. Um, and that worked okay. It worked great. I, I was a lot of fun, but kind of like you said, it, it kind of feels like a, a lot of people do that now. And so I don't know, it just maybe gets a little more lost in the shuffle, but it, for me, it was still fun to do it, to do the reveal. Um, a lot of people, you know, left comments, really nice comments about the cover. And honestly, my favorite part about it was giving a shout out to the illustrator, which is something my, um, editor recommended. So that was kind of a cool part is there was like an interview that I did and then the illustrator as well was interviewed and talked about the cover and how she chose the fox, for example, <laughs> which Angie was talking about. Um, so that's, yeah, we did, we did the reveal. And then what's so fun is once you reveal it, you can then post it everywhere on your social media, you know, the cover is out there. It just made it feel more real, I guess, if that makes sense. So it was a lot of fun. Cool. Awesome. Um, so yes, also during this season from book cover to four months before publication, uh, you want to start thinking about school visits and your bookstore visits when the book comes out. So you're not actually contact any, any people at this point yet. It's still probably too early. 
Um, but you're continuing to build your relationships with those teachers and librarians around the country. And you are growing your relationships and conversations with your local librarians and teachers that you're starting to get to know and your local bookstores. So uh, as you get closer, you're going to be contacting them officially to set some things up. You're not quite there yet, but this is a good time to figure out logis uh, like just the logistics of what am I going to do? If my if my publisher is not sending me on book tour, which is 90% of authors, then I got to do something myself and I need to figure out how to set that up. And I usually block off, if, if my publisher is not sending me on tour, I'll block off two to three weeks and I'll start thinking about, okay, the first week uh, I want to go to the Phoenix area and north of Tempe, Phoenix and Scottsdale maybe. And then the second week, I want to focus on Chandler and Gilbert or whatever. And the third week, Mesa. So that's my whole area, my whole region, uh, right around Tempe where I live. Um, that's how I might structure something like that. And then you're going to the same area. You're starting to think about which schools you want to contact so that you can try and get the schools that are in the same area as the bookstore that you hope to do an event at um, later in the week that you're doing those school visits. Um, at this time, you're also thinking about how can I help librarians and teachers uh, get their students interested in my book. And one thing you can do is an intro video, just like a one minute or one to two minutes of a, a video of yourself introducing your book. Um, and I'll show you actually one that I did that I was using last year. I'm actually about to redo it, but uh, I'll show you the one that we've been using. It's something that the librarians can use when the kids come to the library to show them, hey, this is the author who's coming. And then, you know, you want to start thinking about, well, what if I do a book trailer? Um, you can maybe hire a, a teenager to use some fair use uh, media to put a book trailer together for you. Um, so things like that start, you can start working on those now. And that feels like, wow, I'm actually doing something while I'm waiting for this book to come out because it, it does feel like it lasts forever. forever. Um, additionally, what do you want your publisher to do for you? Um, now, sometimes they won't do anything. Sometimes they do a lot and it all depends, but it never hurts to ask. So you might have a meeting, a marketing meeting set up with your publisher. You might not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's all up to the publisher. And if they want to have a meeting with me, I love that if they do. Um, but even if they don't, you can still ask for things. Um, and the worst thing they can do is say no. But I like to have them make a professional looking book trailer, especially for a series. I love to have just a book one book trailer to introduce. I use them in my presentations at schools. I also really love the paid social media influencers. So they take care of hiring social media influencers who have their kids read my book in advance and they are posting all throughout the first couple of weeks of the book release. Um, you can interact with them as well and you know leave comments on each other's things. I've become friends with some of them. Um, but I love that because when I'm busy doing school visits all the time, all day long, and then evening bookstore events, I often am so tired or I, I can't even, I don't have the brain power to do a lot of social media. So I can just retweet them or repost their posts. Um, I also really like to have a little bit of swag. Um, and I prefer like with a series like this Map of Flames series, uh, I asked the publisher, will you make some book plates so that we can send them out, especially now when we're doing a lot of virtual events. It's so nice to be able to send a pack of signed book plates to the school that you're visiting. Um, and you can also ask for like a bookmark or, or something like that. I was wondering about the social media influencers. 
uh, are you saying is that something you would approach your publisher to ask them to do or is that something you might take on i know you're going to talk i think a little bit later about how you might spend some money on marketing if you want to but yeah how do you I would ask, yeah i would ask my publisher for help on that um because they have contacts they have people doing that all the time and so they've got some great contacts like that and um so yeah i'd ask i'd ask them to set that up and if they say no then maybe you can say well i'm interested in doing it anyway on my own dime uh can you give me some names that you recommend and so hopefully they can help you out that way that's really cool i honestly didn't i didn't even know that existed <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that. That's great. Um, I also love the idea of the author video because I feel like that's something we can all do and you can take multiple takes, right? Until you get it the way you want it. And then it seems like it will get a lot of mileage out of it. A lot of people will end up watching that. Same thing for the book trailer. So that's fantastic. Um, I have not had a meeting with the marketing team, but now I'm making my list <laughs> for when I do. This is all so great. Um, Okay, so is it time maybe to move along to season three, which is about four months before release day? Um, what can we be focusing on during this time as we're just waiting, waiting, waiting those four months before for our book to finally come out? Okay, well, season three, four months before. This is when things really kick into gear for me. Uh, this is when I start to reach out to all of the, the lists of librarians at the elementary and middle schools around my home, and I start to build my schedule for the release week, uh, for the week before sometimes, and uh, definitely the week after. And for those of you who have a regular full-time job and you can't go to schools, um, think about maybe it might work if um, if you start say at, at 9 a.m. your time, um, but you're uh, in California, but you could do East Coast events uh, before work. I mean, that's not ideal, obviously, but that is one option because we can do so much virtually. Um, that's a great way to kind of try and schedule, or maybe you work early and you get out early and it's five o'clock in New York where you live, but you could still get into a California school because it's only two o'clock there. So um, try and, and think creatively on ways to, um, to be able to uh, work your schedule, but, uh, and then you start booking. And what I would do is I, when I am scheduling book visit or school visits, I'm thinking about location. I want three schools on this day that are all really close to each other so I can get from one to the next. And it's also close to a bookstore where I'm going to be doing an event at the end of the week. Um, I'll start to book one, I'll, I'll probably reach out to just a handful of librarians at first and try to do just one day at a time until I have a pretty good schedule and then fill in the holes for that week. Um, I wanna contact my bookstore and say, hey, I'm gonna be doing bookstores or I'm gonna be doing schools in your area. Can I schedule a book event with you for that night? They're all these schools, I'll tell them to work with you so they can buy their books through your store. And then we'll set this up and they'll be very excited to know that. So the bookstore will probably want to schedule something with you and just start building that schedule. Once you know what your whole schedule will be, um, what I have done in the past is, um, for instance, this past year with Map of Flames, I did three areas of Phoenix uh, and I did three bookstores. So I scheduled Monday through Friday in these three different locations. And then I did three bookstores, one in each of those locations where I did the schools at the end of the week. Then I created a postcard. And once you're certain when your bookstore events are going to be, create your postcard, put all three of those stores on the postcard. I'm gonna show you an example in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. But put all three events, make 
thousands of postcards, hand them out to every kid you meet that week. Then they can choose to go to one of the three bookstores. Maybe they can't make the one that's close to them, but they can go a different night even though it's a little more of a drive. So that's why you want all three stores on one card. And uh, in your presentation, you're gonna invite them. You're gonna say, guess what? I'm gonna be doing a book party in your neighborhood. I'm gonna be right at the Barnes and Noble over in Dana Park or whatever, or I'm gonna be at Changing Hands Bookstore um, in Tempe or something like that. Um, and you're gonna show them a slide with this invitation, this postcard, and you're gonna say you're invited. And they're gonna be so excited to know that. They're invited to something special. That's really exciting. So you're gonna give them a postcard to take home. They're gonna hang on to that. Uh, I like the postcard idea better than a flyer because the flyer kind of gets all wrinkled and crinkled at the bottom of a backpack. The postcard is a little sturdier, it's smaller, it's easy to stick to the refrigerator so the kids remember. And on that postcard, in addition to the three bookstores, I also put a spot where they can enter a raffle. So they just have a line there, put your name here and bring this to the store with you. This is your ticket to my event. Um, and you can enter a raffle. And they come, I'm, I'm not kidding, Megan, they come with that postcard holding it out in front of them up to the bookstore <laughs> doors. They're so proud. They're so happy. They're so excited to be invited and they bring it in there and they enter the raffle. And um, so that's, so you want to make that postcard. It's really important. Um, that's one of my favorite things. I feel like that's probably one of the most effective ways to get kids to come to your bookstore event and families. And also what I put on that postcard right by that raffle is that you can enter to win books and a gift card for your driver. Now the driver is the important part here. That's a big factor. If the, the kid might wanna come to our event, but if we don't have the drivers, the kid's not gonna make it. So we wanna try and reach out to that driver and encourage them to have a chance to maybe win something too and make a joke out of it. And uh, that will hopefully bring some people out. Can I just say something about the postcards, Lisa? I am just, this is like the most genius idea ever. And I don't know, can you see my face? Or I don't know if you guys can I, see me. I can't or, see you at the moment. Okay, well, I'm sitting here just like in awe because I have four kids and they're all middle grade ages. And if they came home with a postcard from school, from an author, I mean, they would lose their minds. They would put that thing on their bulletin board. I just love the personal touch of it and the gift card for the driver, Lisa, that is brilliant. That I just, I'm sure everyone watching this is taking notes on. And like Lisa said, later you'll get to see that, the magical postcard, what it looks like. So just thank you so much for sharing this particular tip. I think it's incredible. Oh, you are so welcome. Um, so yes, you're gonna wanna continue to uh, strengthen your bonds. And I accidentally, fast forwarded our slide. So sorry about that. <laughs> I think we're ready to move on to season four though. I think you're just so excited for season four because oh my goodness, season four is what we've been waiting for. Our book, our little bit book baby is out in the world. So can you just tell us authors what in the world can we expect once our book is actually out there and kids are reading it and it just seems bananas and exciting and all the feelings. <laughs> it is so exciting, but I just want you to know that it's hard and it's okay to cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a big, I mean, it's, it's a lot. You're going to mm -hmm. go, your book is out in the world. Nobody knows about it. It feels like everyone should know about it, but mm -hmm. they don't. But you've done a really good job building up your connections with these different uh, schools and you've introduced your book to them. So the, the kids you see at those schools or your bookstore events, they're going to be very, very excited about this. This is a big, big moment. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, I am terrified of school visits 
and bookstore visits. And I'm going to tell you, I was terrified too for like five years. It took me five years of doing this before I actually could get through or get to a presentation where I wasn't feeling sick to my stomach. So I am not an extrovert. I am very introverted. I could just stay in my little chair in my loft here in Tempe and never leave. And I would be just fine. So it's always a big deal for me to go back out on tour, Mm -hmm. but I have a little trick for you. This is for those of you who need a little boost of confidence. Maybe you are scared to death like me. And I, this is really silly, but you have to know, I can't see you. No one can see you. Um, everybody should stand up a minute, I think. So here's what we're going to do. This is what you should do if you are nervous or scared and you're about to do an event and a school and you think you're going to throw up, go into the bathroom, put your arms up in the air and just stand like that for like a minute and a half or two minutes. And this helps to fill out, like it it helps your endorphins or something. I don't know. It just works. I promise. And I want you to say, I am big. (laughs) My husband's cackling. Oh, I am amazing. And talk to yourself, give yourself some good self-talk, spread out your body. So you feel big and amazing. And then you're going to feel so much better going into that school visit, that bookstore. Um, So do you think I'm really weird now? No. Can I tell you a secret? Because you and I, you had told me this secret before. I did this, Lisa, right before this webinar (laughs) because I was excited and nervous. Oh, really? Um, So I, I did it. I did the secret, everyone. I stood up and I said, I'm big. I'm amazing. I got this. (laughs) So that was my little mantra. So I, I, it worked. I mean, it just kind of brings you back to your body and just reminds you, I got this. Like these kids want to see me, you know, they want to learn about what it means to be an author. And so just trying to feed off of that positive energy. I love it. I love your, your secret. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And so once you're there at the schools or at the bookstores, you're going to want to try and take a few photos. If they've made a sign for you, which sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't, take a picture, post it on social media, try and post every day right around that book release time and for the next couple of weeks and just keep things active on your social media. And I know you mentioned one important thing about posting pictures, getting permission from librarians, I think is what you had told me. They tend to know if there's any kids who aren't allowed to have their face shown. Is that correct? Is that a good? That is correct. Um, That's the best thing to do is to ask the librarian. I, you know, I took this picture of the crowd. Usually if you take a picture of the backs of their heads from the back of the room, maybe you can ask the librarian to do that for you since you'll be very busy. Um, But Mm -hmm. Actually, that's fine, but you should always ask permission if it's okay to post a photo that has children in it. Um, also, tag your publisher. I, I for, for years, I thought, oh, I'd just be bugging them if I tagged them on Instagram or in Twitter. No, they want to know what you're doing. They want to see, hey, this person, this author, they're really doing some stuff. That's good. They're going to know, they're going to notice that if you tag them. Um, Yeah. So that's it for the seasons. Um, And you just continue to market your book until the end of time. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But now you've got a book out. Now you've got other things to talk about. You can add to your presentation for your next book and fun stuff like that. Um, Okay. Do you think as we're kind of moving out of the four seasons, can you talk a little bit about marketing and if we should maybe spend some of our own money on certain things and how that might look? Right. Well, we don't all have money. When I first started in this business, I had no money. My publisher actually sent me on book tour and said, um, you know, when you, they, they put you up in some nice hotels and stuff like that. And I, like they said, if you spend anything, you can turn in the receipts and we'll, we'll pay you back. And I was like, 
okay, yeah, that's great, but I don't have any money to spend on stuff and wait for you to pay me back. So that's where I was starting from when I first became an author 14 years ago. Um, and that is very normal. We're all just trying to get by being writers. It's not the, the most lucrative business uh, most of the time. So uh, we don't always have money. And so if you don't have any money to spend, that's okay. Focus on the social media gatekeepers. Really ramp that up. Uh, engaging, talking about what's going right and wrong with the libraries. Librarians are getting hammered right now. So be supportive. That's a really great way to engage. Um, attend author events and grow your network. If you can go to your local school or local bookstore and attend an author event and support them and do what Megan did with me, uh, that's a great way to help broaden your audience because they might retweet you. Um, book more school presentations if you're able to, uh, and really work on your presentation. You want your presentation to be very exciting for a 10-year-old uh, if you're doing middle grade, or a first grader if you're doing picture books, or that ninth grader if you're able to get into high schools, or uh, eighth or ninth uh, if you're doing middle schools, if, you're do if you have YA books. Um, just uh, that presentation is going to be memorable. Uh, if you have a little bit of money, maybe bookmarks. If your publisher isn't uh, willing to make you some bookmarks, bookmarks are pretty cheap to, to make. Uh, or a small giveaway. You can do a little buttons or keychains are pretty cheap. Um, stickers are really big right now. Kids love stickers. They love to put them on their water bottles. Uh, and if you've got $119, I am going to very much recommend a Goodreads giveaway. And maybe if you got some physical arcs, that's something you can give away. Or you take some of your author copies when they come right at the beginning when your book comes out and do a Goodreads giveaway. And I'm going to show you a, a, what the impact of that is uh, in a little bit. Um, but you're also going to need some money for postage and books. You could also give away books to librarians, all the librarians you've been meeting all along. They would love to have your book in their library, especially if you send them a free copy. So that might be a way to do that. If you get, get a bunch of author copies, um, don't just leave them sitting in your basement or in your house in a box, get them out into the world, get them to those school libraries. It's a great way to do it. Um, if you have a little more money, those postcard invitations I was telling you about, I think I bought 7,000 postcards for my one week in this uh, Phoenix Valley. Um, that was about $350 on Vistaprint. Um, so that was a chunk, but it was so worth it. Uh, raffle items, if you've got any, if you're a prolific author, you maybe have a few other books out, give those as raffle items, buy a $10 gift card to the independent bookstore that you're going to do your event at. Um, those giveaways also to educators. And if you have a lot of money, maybe you got a good advance, uh, you can hire a freelance publicist. There are people who can book you and do some of this job for you. That's building those weeks of tour um, in case you don't have time to do it yourself or you're doing a lot of touring um, or a lot of uh, um, just like video stuff where you're um, being interviewed constantly if you're on the radio a lot or you're doing TV stuff, you can hire a freelance publicist to do uh, some of that work for you. Uh, I actually have done that once and I'm, I'm totally doing it again because it was so worth, uh, so worth it. I'm hiring someone named Nicole Calero who you can find on Facebook and I think she's on Instagram as well. Um, but there are several different freelance publicists out there. And then stock up on more books. If you have um, like a kids need to read uh, organization that does outreach to kids who can't afford books, but you want to buy some of your own books to donate them to, uh, to a nonprofit, you can do that. There's all kinds of different ways to get your book out into the world. Uh, so yeah, 
that's, uh, that's what I would spend my money on. Well, I love this. I love how it's broken up. It feels like no matter what your financial situation is, you can make marketing work for you. Um, and then I know we're kind of nearing the end of, of our time, but you have some awesome examples. I'm really excited, Lisa, for people to see these because I'm a visual learner. So I think once they see these, like the postcards and the author video, it's going to be really helpful. Very cool. So uh, the on the left, you see you're invited to a summer book party. So I just came back from a huge tour. I set it all up myself. I wanted to go on vacation to the East Coast. So in order to be able to write off some of my expenses, I thought, let's do some book events out there in the East Coast. So uh, I visited Connecticut, Boston area, Portland, and did events. Now, what I tried, and like I said, I'll try anything. I tried to do these flyers and postcards to summer events, but I, I sent them to schools in these areas in late May, thinking, uh -huh. I'm just going to try this to see. And I didn't think it was going to work because that's way too long for a kid to be holding on to a postcard. To, for a July event when they're getting it in May. But I reached out to some different schools. I let them know I was coming in, in the summer. Uh, I said, would you like any postcards? Do you think you have any kids who might like that? And I'll tell you what, it didn't work. And mm -hmm. oh, well, I mean, it worked actually for one of the stores, for the one on the right. That's the backside of a postcard. On the other side of that postcard is my book cover. Um, but that one, the turning the page event that the postcards actually worked for that one. I don't know why it worked for that one and not for the Brookline booksmith in Boston and not for the Portland one. Um, and not really, it worked a little bit, I think for RJ Julia, um, but, uh, not as well as turning the page. So I probably wouldn't spend the money on a summer invitation to try to get to schools two months before the actual event happens. So that was a fail, but um, it worked for one store. So those are a couple of those. Uh, this is a slide from my presentation. This is where I start to get excited. Guess what? I'm going to be at your local bookstore tonight or tomorrow night, and you're invited. I'm going to have a book party for this book. Uh, and they go wild. Yeah, <laughs> we're invited. It's so cool. So that's just an example of what a slide looks like from my presentation. Then this. What's up, everybody? I'm Lisa McMahon, author of the Unwanted series and a bunch of other books, including a brand new series, The Forgotten Five. Book one is called Map of Flames, and it's about five supernatural kids raised in a secret hideout on a deserted island who decide to enter civilization for the first time to search for their missing criminal parents. If you're watching this video, and I think you are, that means something special. It means I'm coming to see you, either virtually or in person, to talk about my new series and about being a writer. I'm also going to be doing a fun bookstore event in your area with free giveaways and a very cool raffle. You can win books and prizes. You'll have a chance to pre-order an autographed copy of Map of Flames through your school, and I'll sign it myself. But I need you to do a little research before my visit to learn some things about me and about the Forgotten Five series. One way you can do that is to go to my website or my YouTube channel. I bet you can find it. Just search for my name, Lisa McMahon. You can ask me anything, including, why do you have long hair in this video when your author photo shows you with short hair? Or, you know, questions that would make your teachers really proud, like, how long does it take to write a book? Or, how do you get your ideas? Get working on those questions, and I will see you soon. That's my little author intro video. You got to kind of make it a little wacky for the kids. They love it. Um, but that's another uh, example. And then I have some results to share with you. 
Remember when we were talking about the Goodreads giveaway? You can kind of see on the left, that is a screenshot of my Map of Flames Goodreads book. Uh, and you can see starting in around February, some people are adding it, just tiny little blips at the bottom. And then there's this huge jump where almost a thousand people in one day added my book to their to read list. And that's the day that I offered Map of Flames as a giveaway. So um, if you've got your Goodreads page, you can go there, you can list it yourself. You can also ask your publisher to do this. Um, sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. But I gave away 10 copies because I wanted to really have people think they had a pretty good chance. But that big blip was the first day. And then the next several days, there were quite a lot more. And probably I got 3,500 people adding Map of Flames to their to read list uh, just for doing this giveaway. So then you end up mailing out the books yourself at the end of it. Uh, it's really a pretty easy process. Uh, on the right, a media center report. This is from Tarwater Elementary School. And the, the librarian was kind enough to send this to me. This was at the end of May this year where she tallied all of the checkouts from their media center. And I came to visit her school in mid-February. And I talked about Map of Flames and I also talked about the Unwanteds. And she sent this to me and she said, this is what your visit did. It boosted unwanted to number one spot. Uh, and that has always been, she's like, that was always you know, a favorite book of our kids, but you would have never beat Wimpy Kid. All those Wimpy Kids, look at them all, Dog Man and Dork Diaries. And there at number one is my book, The Unwanted, because I came and did a school visit. Uh, and she said, Map of Flames made, was number 11. Uh, and that's because they only had it from February until May at the end of school. So she said that one was just, just missed the list. But these are the kinds of results that you don't hear about. You don't know this is happening unless you've got a great librarian who happens to think to reach out to you and let you know that this happened. So that's very exciting. There's me signing books at Rover Elementary here in Tempe. Um, where we sold just a ton of, of Map of Flames. That was very exciting. Sometimes you don't sell any, sometimes you sell 150 and that's just wonderful when that happens. And I want you all to remember if it seems too hard to do all the things, it is hard, uh, especially if you've got little ones at home or you've got another job. Um, so I encourage you to just pick what feels right to you and I promise it will make a difference. Before we go to questions, I want to encourage you all to find Megan's book and you can see what they were talking about here with the fox uh, on her cover, Heroes of Haven Song. Uh, this is Dragon Boy book one coming in January. Very exciting. And it's a wonderful book. I've read it. I've enjoyed it and I've blurbed it. So fantastic. I'm excited for you, Megan. Thank you. We're gonna have time for just a few questions, I think, but if you really wanna talk more deeply, you wanna have some more questions time, uh, you can ask me anything at a chat that I'm doing, again, with the Country Bookshop, who is so wonderful hosting us now, uh, at the end of August, on August 31. Uh, that, I think, is a Wednesday night. We're gonna do the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Uh, and there should be a link coming in the comments or it already is there, I guess. Uh, wonderful, thank you, Matt. Um, you can join in and I'm thinking that's gonna be a little bit more of uh, me just reading through the chat, through the Q&A and talking about different parts of this industry. And I, you can ask me anything, I promise I'll do my best to answer. Uh, and if you want to know anything more about my books, I have some other books out there. Um, I've got eight young adult books, and I have 20 books for middle grades, and that's some of them there. But you can find me at my link tree. You can see where I'm going to be traveling around the country. You can uh, order the books through my website, or uh, you can actually go to 
um, this bookstore, the Country Bookshop's website, and find my books there as well. With that, I want to say thank you. And I believe in you. and You've got this. Uh, so chat or Q&A, what do you think? What, where should we go to? Angie, are you there? I'm here. So there are a few questions in the Q&A. My chat would not work. I apologize for not chatting in the chat, but my chat was unable to chat. Um, but there are a few questions. Um, Karen wants to know, what do you raffle off at the bookstores? Hmm. This past year, I was um, the summer when I did my raffles around uh, the country this summer in the in the Northeast, I had arcs of book two. So that was a fun little surprise. Um, I also would purchase one of my other bookstores from one of my other books from the bookstore where I was doing the event, which is kind of a nice goodwill thing you can do, especially for our indie booksellers. Um, so like, I think I was doing either the first book in the Unwanted's Quests. Uh, so then there would have been like Invisible Spy arc, Unwanted's Quest book one, uh, a little swag bag of exclusive swag that I don't give out to anyone else and uh, the gift card. So like a $10 gift card. And then I would either, it depends how many people are in your audience, but you can either put that all together as one big gift uh, or you can split it up into four different prizes for different, so you have more than one winner. I think the first time you came to my store, you had little dragons, right? Did you have tiny oh. dragons? That would have been, yeah. And yeah. we still have a tiny dragon sitting on somebody's desk. It was a huge coup to get one of the tiny dragons. Yes, I did dragons for the Unwanted's Quests. I did a uh, kitten and fox in the early Unwanted's books. That was a million years ago. Um, oh, <laughs> my husband's so awesome. He just sent me, he just wrote me a little note. Stop screen share. <laughs> um, Karen has another question. Karen says, when you're doing signings at bookstores, do you need a sign or a tablecloth or anything other printed items that you bring with you? And the same thing at schools, what type of signage do you take with you? Um, I don't take any signage to schools um, because I've got my presentation and it's up on a screen and I've got my book in those slides multiple times. Um, I usually don't take anything to a bookstore either. Uh, often I'm traveling um, by air, so, so it's hard to take anything with you that way. Um, is that the is that the question? Did I answer that? Right. Yes. Correctly. Uh huh. Um, Samantha wants to know for your school visits: Are you doing paid visits, free visits, promotional visits, or a mix of all? Great question, and I meant to to say this. Um, when I'm when I've got a book out, I will do free visits, and I require book sales in the in the couple of weeks right around the book release time. And that is something where I'll let the, the librarian know up front, I'm waiving my fee for this time period only because I'm promoting this book, it just came out. Um, and that's exactly, for those of you who maybe are new to this industry, if your publisher sends you on book tour, you don't get paid for those school visits either. You're being sent around the country, it's a promotional tour. So I feel like, uh, the, the, during that time period, those couple of weeks around the book release date, I will do um, my visits for free and I'll ask that they sell a minimum of 25 or 30 copies of my book. Now I can get away with asking for that number now because I've got a lot of books out. When I was a debut author, I would probably lower that number a little bit, maybe say shoot for 10. Um, and almost always those schools exceed the, the requested number of book sales. We have one other question in the Q&A. Ryan wants to know, do you have favorite ways of engaging with gatekeepers on social media? And then he also wants to know if a taco is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is a hot dog a sandwich? That's what I want to know. Like. Oh, it's Ryan Dalton. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> he 
you are a funny one. Um, now I forgot the original question. Okay, the first question was, do you have favorite ways of engaging with gatekeepers on social media? Sure. Um, so I, I usually just start out by liking a few of their posts. And if I see them talking about a certain book that I've read, I might just comment, oh, I love that one. Or um, if they're talking about stuff that's going on um, with book banning or something like that, I might show them my support uh, and just say, you know, I really appreciate the work you're doing. Um, that kind of engagement, it's just something we would do in person. If it was a group of teachers or librarians in a room, I would approach them and I would try and show them that I appreciate what they do because we should be a team. Teachers, librarians, authors of picture books, middle grade and YA. I feel like um, sometimes uh, it's hard for us to connect. And so we have to really make an effort to do that um, and to, go, to let teachers and librarians know, you can reach out to me on social media with your class. If you have questions, you've read my book in your class, ask me a question, I'll answer. Uh, most authors will uh, if, they're, if they have a presence on social media. Um, we can work together to get kids excited about books. And that is just so key. And that's what we all want. We want kids to be excited about books. We have a common goal, a common interest. Um, also, I saw a question or a, a note, I think it may have been in the chat, something about Book Posse. Book Posse is free. All you have to do is send them some books. And I would reach out to them first and I would follow every single member of Book Posse and of all those other ones I mentioned, Book Sojourn. Um, oh man, there's so many. Uh, there's that book posse, I think is probably the biggest one. And then book allies is another really big group of librarians who just talk about books. So, um, yeah, just reach out to them, follow them, like some of their tweets, and then send a DM and say, Hey, if I send you some books, will you, do you think anyone would be interested in reading them? And then they'll take it from there. We thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, Lisa and Megan, for sharing your secrets with, the, with us and with the world. Um, I do feel like we're all a team. We're all trying to grow young readers and, and uh, readers are leaders of the future. And we like to feel like we're all part of that. So I'm Angie from the Country Bookshop in Southern Pines, North Carolina. We appreciate you all joining us. We look forward to seeing you again. If you have more questions, you know exactly where you can go to get them answered. Uh, sign up for Ask Lisa Anything. I'm trying to think of what I'd like to know. So <laughs> there's always something to learn. Thank, Thank you all you very much. much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks.